We're on day three of this place. It's been fun. We're on episode three as well. You know, I got asked today, Matt, how do you find these projects? We took over an abandoned framing project. The last framing subcontractor just left this place, left it to wither away in the California sun. He built the first floor. He built the floor system. He screwed the floor system in every way that you can imagine. And here we are. I'm glad he stopped. He, he could have done a lot of damage if he built the upper and then the roof. What he built was the easy part. But yeah, I thought that was a pretty interesting question. Matt, how do you find these projects? I think the answer is that I don't find these projects, the projects find me. I'm like a magnet for the weirdest things we could possibly build. So here we are. It's a beautiful day out today. Hope you guys are doing well. You look so beautiful, Fox. <laughs> you look like Thank you should you. sing with like a band called like Nail Smith or something. Nail Smith. <laughs> now let's talk about how to frame a door and how to do it correctly. First things first, you need to have your layout. Once you have your layout, put your studs in and nail your studs all the way through top and bottom. So Fox is going through making sure all of his studs are nailed off, including the king studs, which are labeled for this door. After that, he's gonna put in these little blocks called top cripples. These go in place of a full size stud above a header of a door opening. So the 16 on center layout is going to follow all the way through in these top cripples. From there, he's going to install the header. Since this is interior and non-load bearing, we're able to use a double two x four. So he's going to install the first two x four, nail into those top cripples and nail from the king stud into the header. From there, he'll double up that header, make sure everything's flush all the way through, and then work the bottom of the door. So the most common door size is a 2668 or a 2868. First number being your width, second number being your height. The piece that Fox is going to be cutting now is called a trimmer, and it goes from the sill plate all the way up to the bottom of the header. This acts as a support and also an adjustment for when you go to set your doors. On a six foot eight door, your trimmers will always be 80 and a half. Now Fox is going to nail in these trimmers. We always nail two at the bottom, in the middle, and at the top. That way we can adjust the trimmer from top to bottom. So now that door is complete, he's gonna block out the wall and then this wall can go up. Let's talk about those numbers a little bit more though, just so you know. 
Look at the bottom of the header, it says 37 inches. This door opening is a 2868. 28 is the width, 68 is the height. We're going to add three inches in total for the trimmers and we're going to add two inches in total for the casing of the door on each side. So we're adding five inches in total to our 32 inch opening. That makes our header 37 inches. Now for the height, you have a 68 door, we're gonna frame it two inches higher. The reason that we do this is so you have an inch for casing at the top. An interior door doesn't have a casing at the bottom but we do have flooring. So a 6'8 door will actually frame at 6 foot 10, which is 82 inches. We have enough down there.
So we've got this place pretty much buttoned up up top. We went per plan, so all of our connections are made up top. The downside is they're not downstairs. We will have to add those connections downstairs and it's kind of a mess. Wanted to go over a few things though because some people were asking questions on how do you bid something like this? That is a good question. There's, there's a few ways to calc something like this. In business, you have what we call a CODB, a cost of doing business. So for me to run with seven guys for a whole week costs around 11 grand. Therefore, if it would take us two weeks to do this, we need to make 22,000 in order to break even. But the goal isn't to break even, the goal is to profit. That is one way. You could also run it as a time and material charge where you're charging X amount per guy and material plus 15, 20, 25%. On this project specifically though, I have a pretty good understanding of what needs to be done. If there was drywall and everything covered, obviously there's unknowns, but I can see everything. I could walk this place in the beginning and see they missed all of their point loads down below. I could see that they don't have the hardware that they need downstairs or the blocking in the floor system, so on and so forth. The list goes on and on. Therefore, I did bid this place at a fixed price. The guys are up top though right now getting some interiors wrapped up, some exteriors wrapped up. By the end of the day, this place should be complete. After we're done up top, we have some stuff to do down below. We need to make sure that everything is as it should be with our connections from bottom to top. We're gonna go over that in just a second and make sure that we are good to wrap this place in sheer panel. We have a couple areas that are overspanned. We'll work on that. But the goal is to make this place as if we built it ourselves from the ground up. So there is a wide variety of things that need to be done upstairs but aren't done downstairs. One of those is all of these blue lines that are marked out on the rim joist here. All of these represent a strap connection from bottom to top and all of the posts except for the six by here in the corner are missing. So we have one over there, we have four out this way, we have four on the back side, a couple on the far side over there. What's gonna happen is we'll have a strap, a CS16 strap some of them are doubled, as you can see with this blue line here. And that CS16 strap will run from the six by here up to the six by there. Better, buddy. <laughs> no, because I couldn't. Were you going back and forth? Yeah. Go. I'm going to go first. Ready? Oh, that's not a bad idea. Oh. Sure. 
This floor system squeaks more than any floor system I have ever walked on. Aside from like a 1920s home that they didn't even know what glue was back then. Now the one thing that I'm seeing here that tells me they waited too long to screw the floor off is that there's hand drives at the corner of every single sheet. My guess is that they went through, laid down the glue, laid down the sheets, hand drove the sheets in just to get them tacked, did the whole floor, and then came back. It could have been a day, could have been two days later, then screwed it off. By then the glue is already setting up and once you go to screw it in, you're getting uneven walking surfaces. You have glue piled up under there rather than smushed down creating a bond. And that is ultimately why this floor system is the noisiest floor system we have seen. But as of right now, this place is wrapped up. We are looking to head out. We're missing a few things. We're missing the header for right here. Everything else though is complete. We are ready for trusses. The truss manufacturer has been notified. They're gonna come out. They'll do a field measure as they normally do. They'll verify all the numbers on the place, make sure that we are close. They'll make the trusses. Right now we're about two weeks out. They'll get the trusses delivered. We have Louie coming out, flying these trusses in. We'll get them in place, sheet the roof, and then we are on to the next one. For the most part though, this place is looking good. This is two days of work. Everything is up, everything is blocked. Guys are currently sheeting down below. The reason they're doing that is because I saw a video from Texas where they didn't sheet any of their lower walls and a storm blew through and knocked three of their buildings over. They had braces up, but man, oh man, that did not save them. So we watched that on lunch and then decided we wanted to shear some of the bottom to where we didn't look like them. So when you build a set of stairs, you have to have fire blocking all the way through here at the landing, on your stringers, and what that does is it'll go right in here and prevent fire from coming up and then transferring up through. So you would have fire blocking going all the way around here, just at the top of the platform, and then up the side of the stairs, down the side here, down both sides here. On the back side, this one landed where it was supposed to. The end of the shear wall is supposed to have another one. It'll tie down right there. That's missing. Over here, this was supposed to come down and tie to this four by six. So the four by six is in the wrong location. That'll move over. Then one of our favorite details so far is they went ahead, blocked and strapped on their framing when we have to put the shear panel on first, then put that on afterwards. Also, we need to change this to a four by six and this to a four by six here. So we're gonna have to take off the strapping, off the blocking, replace it, replace it, re-block it, re-strap it after we put on OSB.